For over a thousand years, Tibet has been a Buddhist country, woven into the very fabric of our society is a deep respect for the preciousness of all life. This is the wisdom and compassion of the Buddhist teachings. In 1949, in the name of reform, Chinese communists invaded the region of Kham in eastern Tibet. Monasteries with their sacred texts, ancient art and literature were destroyed. Thousands of Tibetans were imprisoned and killed. Kampaga Monastery, the seat of our treasured spiritual teacher, the 8th Kamta Rinpoche, was completely demolished. Kamta Rinpoche and a small group of monks and lamas fled to India. All they took with them, they carried in their hearts. As refugees in India, we gathered around Kamta Rinpoche, living in tent camps and enduring great hardship it was Rinpoche's vision to establish a traditional Tibetan community to preserve our ancient heritage. Kamtu Rinpoche was inspired to name this place Tashi Jong, Auspicious Valley. On a hillside in Tashijong, Kamtu Rinpoche rebuilt the former monastery of Kampagar. Now the sacred Dharma, words of the Buddha, would be preserved with the same purity they had in Tibet. These teachings could be passed on in exile to all who wished to study them. For us, the monastery is like the sun. The whole cycle of life revolves around it. It is the light and warmth of our heart. Come to Rinpoche's unending kindness went into all the details of our lives. He taught us that meditation and work go together. In Tibet, Kampaga Monastery was one of the largest centers of the Dukpa Kagyu lineage. It was renowned for its tradition of yogi Thognans, who were both learned in philosophy and realized in meditation. Only a few of these realized masters were able to escape, carrying precious texts and teachings of their lineage. In the same year that the 8th Kamta Rinpoche passed away, his ninth incarnation was born. Now the yogi Thogdans are his teachers. When he died in 1980, a profound sense of loss filled our minds. 
Everyone felt a strong determination to carry on the 8th Comte Rinpoche's vision to preserve our traditional way of life. Today, Tashijong is a small community with 300 lay people and 100 monks. Early on, we built a craft center and housing for the lay community. Further up the mountain, above the monastery, we established a place for the yogi Togdans. All could be like one body, working, living and practicing the Dharma. We used to live in high mountain regions. The air was pure and the blue sky stretched endlessly. All the world was filled with sacred appearances. In our prayers, we recall the words of our precious teacher. Pleasure and sorrow come and go like the wind. Impermanence is everywhere, yet we still think things will last. Everyone has a son or brother or cousin in the monastery. We carry this tradition from Tibet, where almost one quarter of the men were monks. Nuns and monks practice the Buddha Dharma with the selfless motivation to be of benefit to all beings and to bring peace and harmony to the world. It is considered a blessing to spend a life devoted to the teachings of the Buddha. When a young boy in Tashijong chooses to live in the monastery, all his needs are taken care of. Older monks and lamas look after him. All activities are a chance to learn mindful awareness and to practice kindness. <laughs> Every spring, Kampaga Monastery 
begins preparing for the sacred Lama dances, which celebrate the birth of Guru Padmasambhava. Padmasambhava is the embodiment of all the Buddhas, the great treasure of wisdom and love, who brought Buddhism from India to Tibet in the 8th century. The 8th Kamta Rinpoche, a master of sacred dance, carried the knowledge of these dances into exile. He wanted to make Tashijong a secure place for all the sacred arts. Traditionally, many Thangka painters came from the lay community. The artist must have a heart filled with devotion. Every detail has a special meaning. These paintings, used in meditation, invoke profound faith and awareness. Every morning and evening, we circumambulate the holy temple, walking clockwise like the sun. Reciting the sacred syllables of mantra, we pray so that confusion may be dispelled and with a clear mind and pure heart, compassion may arise for ourselves and all beings. With each ringing of the bell, the Great Prayer Wheel sends countless blessings throughout the universe. Many of us lived as farmers and nomads. We learned from our families and the environment. Everyone shared a lot of time together. From early on, children learned to have a deep respect for all forms of life and to live in harmony with each other 
and the natural world. Now we live on a fragile island of Tibetan culture, surrounded by our Indian neighbors. Without a modern education, we Tibetans cannot survive. Tashijong has its own school. We study Tibetan, English, Hindi and other subjects that prepare us to go on to higher education. to understand the world in a broader way, but we do not want to lose our Tibetan identity. Our Tibetan language is not well suited for technological terms, but it is unique in its ability to precisely express the teachings of the Dharma. It is our responsibility to ensure that our language is not lost. If our culture is secure in exile, it'll be safe for future generations. Early on, we established a Western-style health clinic. Many Tibetans needed treatment for the new diseases they were exposed to in India. Others could not adjust to the change in climate and died. <laughs> Today, many families suffer with tuberculosis and dysentery. Many people have tried to help us, but still we have poor water. Many of the medicinal herbs that grow in Tibet can also be found in the holy mountains of Manjushri surrounding Tashijong. Here, the realized yogi Thogdans live and practice. They keep the esoteric teachings of their lineage alive. Yogi Togden Samdor is a doctor for Kampaga Monastery. While a monk in Tibet, he spent many years studying Tibetan medical science, 
which is based on the early teachings of the Buddha. In Tibetan medicine, the physical and spiritual aspects of our being are important. When heart and mind are out of balance, disease can take root. In diagnosing a disorder, various methods of treatment are used to help restore the innate harmony, which is our true nature. The majority of lay people earn their livelihood in the age-old tradition of crafts. All our work is accomplished by the skill of our hands. Carpet factory is the main source of our income and it also helps us support the monastery. Every spring, the Tashijong community gathers with nearby Tibetan settlements to remember the anniversary of our Tibetan Uprising Day. In 1959, the Dalai Lama, spiritual and political leader of the Tibetan people, was forced to flee to India, followed by a hundred thousand Tibetans. Tibetans who have recently escaped to India tell us stories of daily atrocities. Nuns, monks and lay people are being tortured, imprisoned and killed for simply participating in peaceful demonstrations. As a direct result of the Chinese occupation, 1.2 million Tibetans have died. <laughs> But in exile, we are free to cry out for our six million sisters and brothers living under the brutality of communist rule. We want the world to know that the very survival of our Tibetan civilization is threatened.
Preparation for the sacred dances of Padmasambhava have been going on within the closed doors of the monastery. The third come to Rinpoche was blessed with the vision of Guru Padmasambhava 300 years ago. Padmasambhava instructed him to perform a series of ritual dances to strengthen the faith of the Tibetan people in the Dharma and in dark times to help alleviate suffering in the world. Sacred words of the Buddha are carved into wood, creating new prayer flags that wave in the wind. With each flutter of the prayer flags, the Buddha's blessings are sent to the birds, the insects and all living beings in this vast world. In Tibet, people would travel for months on horseback and yak to see the dances of Guru Padmasambhava. On the morning of the black hat dance, the monk dancers engage in hours of deep meditation. They enter into high states of consciousness, absorbing the power of the practice. Music and chanting transforms the whole environment, helping to create a sacred space. Slow, gentle sounds are used to quiet the mind and deepen compassion. Forceful, fast rhythms are used to annihilate the grasping of ego, the root of all suffering. Softening the mind, we can go beyond our everyday way of perceiving. Then the world becomes a sacred place.
monk dancers consecrate the dance ground, removing all hindrances while internally they purify their mind. In this pure state, all mental and physical obstacles are removed. The whole phenomenal world is seen like a dream or a reflection on water, appearing yet not inherently real. This sacred dance ritual transforms our ignorance into the profound wisdom of the interconnectedness of all life. Certain rhythms are filled with blessings, melting the mind and opening the heart. The essence of the sound is the inseparable union of emptiness and compassion. <laughs> Finally, the black hat dancers offer the merit of the sacred ritual for the welfare of all beings. The dance ground is thoroughly transformed into a state of primordial purity. The young Tuku, the ninth Kamtu Rinpoche, manifests in the tradition of his predecessors. Seeing the tenderness of his being, our hearts fill with devotion. On the following morning, everything is prepared for the actual celebration of Padmasambhava's birthday. This dance is the heart of the ritual.
each gesture of the hands, the placement of a foot, every sound and movement is the language of wisdom. With offerings of music and prayer, we request the presence of Padmasambhava. Our ordinary sense of time and space dissolves. To look upon Guru Padmasambhava is like seeing the sun with its unchanging and unceasing radiance. The light of his great compassion shines out to all and enters our hearts. Guru Padmasambhava, dispeller of darkness, manifests in many forms to help the earth and all beings. The masks symbolize different energies. Seeing the peaceful mass arouses kindness and compassion, while the wrathful mass subdue the most powerful negative energies that cause suffering. The Buddha taught that all these energies are ultimately the expression of our own mind. All this appeared in the third Kamta Rinpoche's vision of the dance ritual. Offering prayers and reciting mantras, our mind fills with the presence of Guru Padmasambhava. His blessings are inseparable from our heart. With love and compassion, we dedicate the merit of our practice for the welfare of all beings.
In this final puja, the monks and lamas receive and offer the blessings accumulated during the sacred dances. completely absorb the enlightened energy manifested through the music, dance and mantra. The power of compassion and insight gathered during these days of ritual is transmitted to the community. We are washed in a shower of blessings and cleansed of all our negativity. The world appears like a precious jewel. With profound gratitude, we remember the far-sighted vision of our teacher, the 8th Kamtu Rinpoche. In his infinite wisdom, he established the community of Tashi Jong, supported by an assembly of great and realized Rinpoches and yogis. They have helped us to hold together and to preserve and propagate our unique heritage as a living reality in exile. We offer these blessings to the people of Tibet and to all beings everywhere. Oh. Mm -hmm. 